Okay, get this. Scientists just found this new species of deep sea bug, and you want to know what they named it. Hmm, I'm intrigued. What is it? Bathinimus vatteri. Wow, that's, uh... I know, right? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, come on. Darth Vader, a deep sea bug. Today we are taking a deep dive into all things Bathinimus vatteri. So first things first, picture this. You're out in the South China Sea, off the coast of Vietnam. You're way, way down deep, and you see this. Okay, I'm picturing it. What am I seeing? This creature that looks like a giant armored pill bug. A giant pill bug? Yeah. Okay, that's Bathinomus vatteri. Interesting. And can you guess why they named it after Darth Vader? Well, it can't be because it uses the force, can it? No, not quite. The article says it's because the shape of its head kind of looks like Darth Vader's helmet. Oh. Like, if you look at it, it actually makes sense. Oh, yeah, I can see it. Right? Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Pretty amazing. And the best part, this thing's huge. We're talking over 12 inches long. Wow. Like, bigger than a football. Really? That's much bigger than I expected. Right. It's not your average pill bug, that's for sure. So, are these things like the roly-polies you find in a garden? Yeah, exactly. Okay. They're actually related to those little guys. Mm -hmm. But, of course, the dairy is like the king of the pill bug world. So like a supersized version? Supersized, and it lives way down deep in the sea. Oh, wow. Okay, so now I'm thinking, what's life like for Bathinimus vaderi down there? Well, imagine a world of complete darkness. Okay, so pitch black. Pitch black, tons of pressure, and you're scavenging for food along the seafloor. So like a deep sea scavenger hunt. Exactly. They basically eat whatever dead stuff falls down there, kind of like the ocean's cleanup crew. That's interesting. But how can something so big survive in such a harsh environment, you know, like with limited food and all that pressure? Well, think about it. Being big means you can go longer without eating, right? That's true. And if you're that big, not many creatures are going to try and mess with you. So it's a survival tactic. Yeah, pretty much. I guess size does matter in the deep sea. But even if they are huge, I imagine these super giant isopods are still pretty rare. You got it. There are only about like 20 known species of these giant and super giant isopods in the whole world. Wow, really? Yeah. And get this, identifying Vaudery was a real challenge for the scientists. Really? Why is that? Well, because, first of all, it's way down deep in the ocean. It's hard to get down there and study them. Oh, yeah. Right. And I bet it's hard to tell them apart from other species. You're telling me it took a lot of, uh, a lot of careful analysis of their physical features and, and, and even some genetic data to figure out that it was a new species. So what finally made Bathinomus vaudery stand out from the crowd? It's actually a super tiny detail. Really? Yeah. What is it? The very last segment of its back legs. Okay. It narrows and curves slightly backward. Oh, so it's like a tiny little curve in its legs. Exactly. And that's how they knew it was a new species. Well, that's how they knew it was different. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's wild. Who would have thought that such a small detail could be so important? I know, right? It's incredible. But here's the thing. This incredible creature, this rare inhabitant of the deep, has now become a hot topic. And it's not just because of its name or size. Why is that? Because it's become a culinary sensation. A culinary sensation? You're kidding! I'm not kidding. Apparently, some Bethanimus species are considered like a delicacy in Vietnam. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. And some of them are even selling for high prices. Like, how high are we talking? Well, the article mentions that some specimens were initially going for around $80. $80? Yeah. That's a lot of money for a uh, for a sea bug. Right. I mean, is it like some sort of like underwater lobster or something? Yeah, that's kind of the comparison they're making. Okay, I've got to admit, I'm a little curious now. What does it taste like? Well, I don't know about the taste, but I do know that as fishermen caught and sold more, the price actually dropped to around $40. So the supply went up and the price came down. Exactly. That makes sense. So now we have this deep sea creature that's suddenly become a popular food item. I know, right? What does that mean for Bethanomus vaderi? Well, that's a great question, and that's what we're going to dive into next. I mean, $40 is still a lot for a giant sea bug. It is, and it kind of makes you wonder about the bigger picture here. What do you mean? Well, we know these creatures are rare. We talked about that earlier. And they don't exactly reproduce quickly. Yeah, a few hundred eggs at a time. Right? Exactly. So with this sudden surge in demand, I mean, it's hard not to think about the impact it could have on their populations. You're right. It's like we're celebrating this incredible discovery, this glimpse into a whole other world down there. Yeah. But at the same time, our actions 
our appetites even could be putting these creatures at risk. That's the dilemma, isn't it? Balancing our fascination with the need to protect what we find, especially in a place as fragile and as unexplored as the deep sea. So what can we do? Is there a way to make sure that Thinimus Vatery and other deep sea creatures like it have a chance? I mean, it's not like we can just put up a no fishing sign down there. It's definitely more complicated than that, but awareness is a good starting point. Okay, so how does that help? Well, think about it. Articles like the one we're discussing, they bring these issues to light, they get people talking, and that can lead to more research, more conservation efforts. Right, I see your point. Yeah. But what do those efforts actually look like when we're talking about the deep sea? Well, sustainable fishing practices would be key. Yeah, that makes sense. But what does that mean in practice? Well, for Bathanoma species, it could involve setting catch limits, you know, making yeah. sure we're not taking too many out of the ocean too quickly. So controlling how many are being fished. Yeah. And another approach could be establishing marine protected areas. Those are kind of like underwater national parks where certain species and habitats are protected. Right. So kind of like giving them safe havens. Exactly. And giving them a chance to recover and thrive. It sounds like a combination of approaches is needed to really make a difference. I think so. It's not a one size fits all solution. And as we mentioned, there's still so much we don't know about these creatures and their environment. That's true, but we do know that there's more to discover. Right? Oh, absolutely. In fact, the researchers believe Bethanimus vattery might exist in other parts of the South China Sea as well. So it's like this whole other world down there, just waiting to be explored. Exactly. And who knows what other incredible creatures are out there just waiting to be found. I mean, can you imagine living in a world like that? It's just mind-blowing. It really is. And it just goes to show, like, there's so much out there we still don't know about the ocean depths. Absolutely. And this deep dive into the world of Bethenimus Vatery, well, it's been a wild ride, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. From its, like, Star Wars connection to its role as this deep sea scavenger. Yeah, and those crazy prices people are paying to eat it. Right. I mean, it, it's fascinating, but it's also been a little bit of a wake-up call, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it really has. You know, learning about the potential threats to this new species. Yeah. It makes you think about the impact we're having on the planet, even in places as remote as the deep sea. It does. It's like we're just beginning to understand this incredible ecosystem, and we're already putting it at risk. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what's the one thing you hope our listeners will take away from this? I think... For me, it's the realization that the deep sea, even though it seems so far away, it's connected to our lives in ways we might not even realize. The choices we make, even those that seem totally unrelated to the ocean, they can have a ripple effect that reaches the deepest, darkest depths. That's a powerful thought for sure. And it reminds us that we all have a responsibility to protect our planet and all its inhabitants, no matter how strange or, or, or even insignificant they might seem. Exactly. And who knows, maybe this deep dive will inspire someone out there to learn more about the deep sea or even to become a marine biologist. I love that.